In other animations, we showed how to frame and sheathe a simple floor like this. In this animation, we're going to dig into this pile of studs and frame some walls. Walls are usually framed flat on the deck and then stood up. But before we begin framing the wall, we want to define its placement. That's done with a chalk line, snapping a line five and a half inches in from the outer edge of the floor framing. With the line on the deck, we can spread out the plates and studs and assemble the wall. Basic wall layout and assembly were covered in another animation, so we're going to move on to sheathing and standing the walls. Notice that this first wall runs the entire width of the foundation. The cap plate will be held back a wee bit more than the wall plate width, so about 5 and 5 eighths inches for a 2 by 6 wall. It's held back at each end so that the plates can interlock. Sheathing can be installed vertically or horizontally. Sheets will break in the middle of studs if the layout's correct and the studs aren't bowed. If the stud is bowed, bend it to layout. You can run the sheets from the bottom plate to the top plate, but that won't tie the wall and floor assemblies together. Instead, hang the sheathing down past the bottom of the wall enough to span the rim joist and mud sill. This joint will be sealed later with a high quality sealant. Temporary braces hold the walls plumb and relatively straight. The next wall is on the opposite end. Again, snap a line, frame the wall, cover it with wall sheathing, and stand it up. The last couple of walls go between the first two. So the stud layout is pulled from the outside of the floor frame, not from the end of the wall plate. You can see that the second stud lines up with the four foot line on this subfloor, so the first stud is centered two feet from the outside edge of the floor framing. The wall is tight between the first two. There's an interior bearing wall running the length of the little house, so ladder backing is added between the corresponding studs. In order to sheathe and stand the wall, it may be necessary to pop those end braces off. You can't add the end pieces of sheathing, because that sheathing will need to span the corner, but you can fill in the middle section. Stand that wall and run the cap plates to lock the corners together. We need to leave a pocket for the intersecting wall here, again, a little wider than the plate, in case you need some wiggle room when plumbing it. Now, we're ready to build that last wall. This one has a couple of windows. You'll notice one opening has a header and one doesn't, and we'll talk about that in a future animation about headers. Again, we pop off the braces, sheed the middle of the wall, and stand it like magic. Tie the corners together with the cap plate, leaving another pocket for the central bearing wall, which goes right there. When installing cap plates, make sure to keep any splices at least four feet apart, and make sure that the point loads are transferred. You are supposed to have tripled this floor joist to account for the point load when you were framing the floor, and it's way easier to do it way back then than it is now that the subfloor is glued and screwed down. Okay, now you can fill in the corners to tighten up the structure. But don't pop those center braces just yet. You'll need to run a string line down the length of the wall and add more braces to pull or push the wall to the line. And that wall will be secured in a straight line by the ceiling and roof frame.